So in this video, what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about media handling. I'm starting the video out with this really detailed painting of a still life of flowers to show you what is achievable with oil paint over many, many months and many, many layers and excruciating patience, um, brushes probably as thin as a needle on the end but also not just tiny little marks, but also larger marks layered over. Something like this green leaf would have started out life probably as a, a blob of just pale green, then darker bits slatted over the top with smaller brushes and so on. So a very, very meticulously handled and controlled painting. This same kind of um, technique can be seen in the next few paintings that I'm going to show you, starting out with what people generally spit, you know, tend to think of media handling as, as being at its best, which is basically photographic. So look at what's going on here. These rocks here would have started out as much larger shapes of perhaps one tone of a sandy colour, and then layers and layers built up over the top until we get to the most exquisite tiny layers on the top, with the thinnest brushes that you can see in the folds of those robes, for example. So artists in this kind of style would be using sticks to lean on so that they can get a little bit of balance. And I zoomed in there to show the clouds just to show the contrast, more softer, wider, swirly motions for the clouds compared to the sharpness of the building. This is a Canaletto painting, very a famous Italian artist, uh, very famous for these scenes of Venice. And look at the same thing here. So we would have been starting with larger areas painted in and the tiniest details like these ropes obviously would be painted over the top of the sky. The sky would be done first. But oil paint is such that you can work it and work it for many months. It takes a very long time to dry. So it can be um, worked into and refined and so on over a long period of time. But excruciating, tiny, controlled, organised, detailed work with... Um, probably years of work on that, I would say. So this lends a very clinical, sterile kind of look to a painting, I think, something which is very, very exact. We understand it really well. Look at the textures here. So we see lace and we see fur. So tiny little cross-hatched marks, marks going in one direction and another, tiny dots. The softness of the paint on the hands is much more, you'd be like using a larger brush for the hands. And then again, yeah, we can see these tiny little marks for the fur. It's not really enough time for me to talk an awful lot, but I think that you understand. And then in the background, you can see much more smoky, faster application. Trees here, again, very small, minute marks, darker layers first, building up to lighter layers on top. You can see that clearly there with that tree in front of the darkness behind. Sky probably would have been done first here, and then the trees worked over the top. Um, and lots of dabbing, lots of, this is not really hugely thick paint, it's not impasto in the way that we understand someone like Van Gogh, but it is also fairly, it's fairly solid, but it's not standing up off the surface of the painting, it's still quite smooth if you were to touch that painting, God forbid, um, but yeah, very photorealistic again, um, and uh, very, uh, very tight and controlled. Okay, we're moving on to Monet now, and Monet really started experimenting with thickness of paint and getting rid of any black and getting rid of any outlines. So impressionism is what's happening here. We're having an impression of a scene. Um, and he would mix his paint directly on the canvas. So if you look closely at what you're seeing here, hundreds of thousands of marks and the movement, look at the movement inside the sky, one direction and another direction, hatching, cross hatching, swirling that paint around. And then the movement in the water, every mark in the water is horizontal to try and create those lovely ripple effects. That's important, it's very organized. Look at the clouds in the reflection as opposed to the clouds in the sky, the real sky. Okay, so we can see the beautiful layering up of the very thick impasto paint there. Impasto meaning so thick it's almost, you could almost touch it. Here's another one here. So if you imagine touching the surface of this, um, this is a beautiful little example of how the Impressionists didn't use black. So Monet's painting haystacks here, and he's painting them in the snow, and there's very strong shadows. But in those shadows, you don't see any black. You see 
orange, brown, purple, pink almost, and then these pure white and little sky blue dots to try and create the highlights. Shadows on the snow, beautiful blues. So the Impressionists were very well known for that, Get rid of, getting rid of any black, getting rid of outlines, being quite fascinated by light. This painting by Van Gogh. Um, you know, I was at the gallery thinking, I can't believe I'm standing in front of something many millions of pounds worth. I mean, Monet's is the same, but, you know, post-Impressionism came after Monet. So Van Gogh was very interested in the Impressionists. He loved the thickness of the paint. He loved the kind of idea of the bright, bright colours we can see in Impressionism. Compared to that painting we saw of the trees a little while ago that was very naturalistic, here the colours become very exaggerated. And look at the thickness of that paint there. You know, this has been left to dry with no precision. He's not, he's not making everything look like a photograph. He's giving us an impression of what he imagines it to be. And then he is putting quite a lot of line into his work, unlike artists like Monet. Um, Van Gogh brought back the idea of outline, very much inspired by Japanese prints and calligraphy. Moving on to more artists that were a bit like Van Gogh. Um, this is a painting by Cezanne called The Big Trees. And if you look at this one, look at how he handles trees compared to that one we saw just a few minutes ago with the, the, the leaves, the dotty leaves. Very photorealistic one. Look at this. So he's again, he's, an, he's a post-impressionist. He's creating an idea of how he believes the trees should be. Um, rather than what they look like with the eye, this is in his mind. So we've got beautiful overlapping of blues and greens um, amongst that canopy of the leaves. An impression. Um, yeah, I've not photographed these for long enough to talk too much. Um, James Guthrie, a Scottish artist. I really love this uh, because you see a, such a contrast of media handling. I wonder if you can figure out what these things are. You'll know in a minute. Um, so look at the the way the paint is just smeared on but in such a controlled way it's incredible little veins on the leaves of the cabbages because that's what we're looking at here now start comparing it to the way he's painting the skin it's beautiful little flash of a knife there bright blue on that knife tip moving out from the painting and we can see the most exquisitely painted face such a haunting look, just so soft, dreamily painted, just beautiful. No strong lines at all, just shapes of tone one against the other. And see how he's painted that face in comparison to the chunky cabbages and the tree canopy behind. Really stark, cold image of Scotland on a cold, a cold day, an autumn day maybe, or harvesting time anyway. Okay, 